This is BC Spritch, your look at the province's burgeoning distilling culture. What's happening, BC Spritz? Welcome to another episode. I'm, of course, your host, Sean Sewell. This week, we are doing gin again. Um, I have a ton of gin in the house uh, because of my Fever Tree project. Um, so I have something like 100 and something gins and from all over the country in my house right now. It's a whole schmozzle. I should have a party, but I don't like people at my house. But <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's horrible, Sewell. Um, this week, I'm tasting some gin. So I went through almost every single episode and like try and track down what I haven't tasted on the show yet. Um, cause I feel like I am getting close to what I can and can't taste to a degree. Um, cause I just don't think I've got much left. I've tasted it. Like we're at almost 35 episodes, 40 episodes and six or seven things per episode. I'm getting close to being done. It's kind of crazy, but there's always stuff out there to be tasted. So this is what we're going to start with. Um, so gin and BC obviously has to be made craft wise, needs to be made from a base spirit using BC agricultural ingredients. Um, this week we've got all craft, uh, no traditional commercial. Um, so first up, uh, we're going to kick it straight off. Obviously, if you want to know more about gin, you can watch some of the other episodes. I've gone over gin a couple of times now. I think this is my fourth or fifth gin episode. Um, first up is the Seaside Gin from Sheringham, multi, multi award winning gin. Um, got 2018 uh, Artisanal Spirit of the Year, um, a gold, sorry, um, it got World's Best Contemporary Gin at the World Gin Awards, which was huge for the company, um, absolutely amazing product, Jason and Elaine are awesome there, Jason is a genius, so, Sheringham Seaside, so Juniper, Coriander, Rose, Local harvested uh, sustainable wing kelp, which is a big one. Um, lavender and citrus. Super clean base spirit. That rose and lavender. Lavender definitely gives it texture. Textures like lavender is all on the palate. Juniper starts spiking up now. The wing kelp gives us some sort of salinity. Um, if you've ever been up to the original distillery at Sheringham, up in, uh, in what do they call it, Shirley, um, you'd go up and you sort of look over the strait and like when you tasted this, it literally tasted like you're in Shirley. And they've kept, captured that even though they're down in soup proper now. It's really, really, really tasty. Citrus forward on the finish, um, super balanced, um, fantastic product. Like I can understand why I got world, like world contem world's best contemporary gin. It's crazy. So next up, some relatively new guys to the market is the Spinnaker's Gin. Yes, yeah, Spinnaker's the beer company or the brew, brew pub. Um, one of the oldest brew pubs in the country is now in the distilling game. I haven't tasted their gin yet, so I'm really curious about this one. Obviously, it makes sense for a brewery to start distilling because they've got so much grain. They're making beer. They, it, the, fermentation, the fermentation process is very, very similar to making beer and making a, a base wort for your spirits. Um, so it makes complete sense again in the spirit game. On the nose, you get a little bit of the funky grain sort of profile, but on the palate, it's just all juniper, um, bright citrus, and then you've just got the complexity of like the baseline, your coriander and your your um, cardamom and that sort of thing on the on the back palate. But it's a bright citrusy sort of forward gin. Juniper's there. Uh, Juniper's almost a woody pine, uh, which is really really fun. Um, great effort for their first time distilling. Uh, really great effort, guys. Um, so next up, noteworthy, another award winning gin. You can see the little thing here. Uh, Twenty nineteen gold. Bang, bang. So the funny thing is, if you listen to the podcast that is coming out this week um, of um, Grant Steve Lee from Noteworthy, he'll actually let you in on a secret that he never liked gin when he started up the distillery, but he knew he had to make gin to pay the bills. So I was blown away by this fact that he's like, yeah, I didn't like gin. I, this is a gin. I created a gin that for people who didn't like gin, which makes a lot of sense. That story sort of clicked in my head and really took me back to when I was first tasting this product. Hundred percent malted barley, but it's super super clean. It's just very floral gin. If you like your um, Hendrixes and that sort of thing, the soft floral tones, this is going to be for you. It's very very nice. It's very floral. 
um, rose petals, dried and fresh. It's the juniper's there, but it's a very light, very light woody. Uh, no, it's a very light, pop, uh, almost grapefruit peel, piney sort of flavor profile. But for people who don't like gin, and they're just staying out. No worthy is the way to go. Um, I've got their uh, navy strength as well, which I'm keeping up my sleeve because I know that Spinnaker's has put up a navy strength as well. So I kind of want to do an episode with just two of those navy strengths. Um, but yeah, oh, floral. Now it's coming. Now you're starting to get those botanicals, the corianders, and the hay sort of flavor profiles and stuff are coming through. Now that's sort of dissipating off my tongue. So next up, now we've done the old growth. Uh, from these guys, we've done the Rosen Hibiscus from Tofino, but this is there just the entry level uh, West Coast Gin. So I'm looking forward to this one because I think that uh, Tofino has a very specific flavor profile with their distillery. All their gins, all their products have a very specific like tone to it, which I've talked about in whiskey. But I think all products, when you start making enough skews, definitely changes. I don't know much about this one because I don't have a huge amount of information on the website, but BC Grain, um, artisanal water from around uh, Tofino there. It's the, gra the grain profile on the distillate's a little bit clean, a little bit got a little funk there, but it's giving a good structure. Co alcohol content sits at about 45, which is great. Um, you're getting a lot of the woody uh, coriander like woody sort of botanicals in the in the front palette a lot um and then you're getting a um sort of the brightness of the juniper and the brightness of citrus and that clean sort of finish to it um but on the on the front palette you get this sort of big bold grain backbone with all these woody botanicals and then on the on the back palette you get this sort of bright citrus and that sort of thing Good entry level. Like, they've got a whole bunch of skews. They've got this one, the Rosemary Hibiscus Gin, as well as the Old Growth, as I said. Old Growth is fantastic with the Cedar, um, but their baseline is fantastic as well. Next up, and final, the Shelter Point uh, Botanical Gin. Hand Forage Botanical Gin. So, um, these guys, I've got a podcast coming up with Jacob um, from uh, Shelter Point fairly shortly. I think it's the next week or two. Um, he talks about his farm. They try and do everything up in Oyster River, up near Campbell River, um, including like they've got like 320 acres, I think. So they've got grain growing. They put they planted some juniper for this for this one in particular. So they really try and do this farm to glass thing on a whole different level. The weaves are just like awesome. Like Jacob and his whole family, I think he's brother-in-law, son-in-law of the family, um, but a fantastic facility. Of course, they're well known for their whiskeys, so obviously I know the grain spirit's going to be fantastic. Creamy mouthfeel, 46%, so you get a little bit of a burn from that. Beautiful creamy mouthfeel for uh, the base the base spirit, but and it's definitely like if you've seen any of my whiskey episodes with Shelter Point, I definitely talk about um, the Shelter Point twang um definitely the shelter point twang the botanicals are really soft really melodic they're playing around with themselves really nicely there um very rounded soft sort of flavor profile with a twang of juniper going straight through the middle so for a, a whiskey distillery to make a fantastic gin it's, i suppose that same as noteworthy noteworthy their whiskeys are fantastic um i suppose shots <laughs> sharing ham's whiskeys are fantastic and that gin is just awesome as well um so these are five local gins guys so we got vancouver island vancouver island oliver vancouver oh actually sorry i'm i'm sorry steve lee you're one out of five non-vancouver island i should have done a vancouver island episode um should have thought that one through sewell um but fantastic local products guys there's Always ones that become cult classics, and I think a lot of these are going to start becoming cult classics. But when you go to the liquor store, look in the set. Yes, pay an extra five to ten bucks for a bottle of craft spirits because that five to ten bucks goes to the local economy, not to a big company. Um, so support local spirits because they support the local economy. They support the local economy um, and help out your friends and family that live in that area who may work for these companies. So please go and support local BC products. I'm your host, Sean Sewell. Hope you have a good week. Go out and buy some gin. Go out and get some tonic. Have a good weekend. I'll see you soon.
Bye.